Hello. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we'll learn basics of the rigid body simulation in Blender. The rigid body simulation can be used to simulate the motion of solid objects. It affects the position and orientation of objects, but it doesn't deform them. Let's press Shift A and add a cube object. Let's go to Physic Properties menu and add rigid body simulation to the cube. Let's click on the play button and play the simulation. As you can see, the cube falls straight down. Because, rigid body type is set to active. It means, the cube is directly controlled by simulation system. The cube falls down because of gravity. If we switch to passive, the cube remains static. Let's add a plane, scale up and extrude little bit. Select the cube and move it above the floor. Let's select the plane again, and add rigid body. When we play the simulation, both object fall down. We want the plane remain static and the cube fall on the plane. To do that, select the plane, and switch the rigid body type to passive. Now, let's press the play button, and see what will happen. As you can see, the cube falls down and hits the plane. Although the floor is static, still interact with the simulation. It means, there would be a collision between the cube and the plane. Let's select the cube again and go ahead the settings. The mass option is basically the weight of the cube. Right now it is set to 1 kilogram. We can set this value whatever we like. We can also change unit system from kilogram to pounds. To do this, go to scene properties menu and switch the unit system to imperial. Let's press shift D and duplicate the cube. Move the duplicated cube on the Z and X axis. Let's play the simulation. As you can see, the cubes are hitting and pushing each others. Let's jump to first frame and select the above cube. Set the mass value to 100 kilograms. Let's play the simulation and see what will happen. As you can see, the cube is pushing the other cube out. Because it is heavier 100 times than the other. Let's delete this cube and select the another. Dynamic option is just like passive option. When we disable the dynamic option, the cube remains static. But, there is a difference. We can also animate the dynamic value. It allows us to control when we enable or disable the simulation. Let's try how it works. So, we need to disable the dynamic option. Then, we need to animate this. To do this, we can click on little dot. Or, we can hover over the dynamic option, and hit the I key. So, it will add a keyframe at the first frame. Then, let's drag the time indicator to frame 20. Let's add another keyframe at the frame 20. From now on, I want to enable the simulation system again. Let's go to next frame 21st. And enable the dynamic option. Hit the I key one more time. Let's play the simulation, and see what will happen. As you can see, the cube is static till 20th frame, then it falls down. Let's delete the cube, and add two new cubes. Let's add rigid body for both cubes. Now, I want this cube move on the x-axis and hit the other cube. To do that, we need to enable the animated option. This option allows to control the object by animation system. Now, 
Press the I key and add a location keyframe. Let's go to frame 20. Then, move the cube on the x-axis so that it hits the other cube. Press the I key one more time. Add a location keyframe. Let's go to the first frame and play the animation. There we go. Now, I want the cube fall down after hitting the other cube. To do that, we need to disable animated option after frame 20. Let's go to frame 20. Hover over the animated option and press I key. Then, go to the next frame, and disable the animated option. Press I key one more time. Let's play the animation. There we go. Let's delete the cubes in the scene. Then, let's add a monkey head and rigid body for it. Now, let's talk about the collision settings. The shape determines the collision shape of the object. It is set to convex hull defaultly. When we play the simulation, the collision happens based on the object geometry. Let's switch to box and play the simulation again. As you can see, the collision happens based on the object's bounding box. Let's switch to cylinder shape. The collision happens based on the cylinder that surrounds the monkey head. When we switch to sphere shape, the collision happens based on the sphere that surrounds the monkey head. Let's rotate the floor a little bit. Let's play the simulation. There we go. Let's set the collision shape to convex hull again. Let's add a cube, and add rigid body for it. Switch the rigid body type to passive. Let's add any deform modifier for the cube. Let's play the simulation and see what happens. As you can see, the collision happens based on the new deformed shape of the cube. Let's go to Physic Properties menu, and switch the source to base. When we play the simulation, the collision happens according to base mesh. It means, monkey head hits non-deformed cube. Now, let's delete the simple deform modifier, and add subdivision surface modifier. Let's play the simulation. As you can see, the collision happens according to base mesh. 
because the deform mode works only with deform modifiers and shape keys. The subdivision surface modifier is a generate modifier. To fix this problem, we need to switch the source to final. Let's play again the simulation. There we go. The final mode works with all modifiers and deformations. Now, let's go over the surface response. Firstly, we're gonna talk about the bounciness. Basically it specifies how much objects can bounce after collisions. Firstly, let's select the monkey head, and set the bounciness value to 1. Then, select the floor and set the bounciness value to 1 also. Now, let's play the simulation and see what happens. When the monkey head hit the floor, it bounces very high. Because we set the bounciness value to the highest. Let's set this value 0.5 for the monkey head and the floor. The friction value is resistance of object to movement. Let's rotate the floor a little bit. Now, let's set the friction value to 1 for the monkey head and the floor. When we play the simulation, the monkey head sticks the floor and doesn't slide. Let's set the friction value to zero for the both object. Let's play the simulation. As you can see, the monkey head slides all the way down, just like iced surface. The collision margin allows you to specify how close the objects will be during the collision. Let's turn on the collision margin, and set the margin to 1 meter. Let's play the simulation. As you can see, the collision happens at 1 meter before the collision. It is set to 0.04 defaultly. Let's go over the dynamics now. We have such a scene. The cube comes over and hits the other cube. Now, let's select the second cube. Increase the damping translation value all the way to 1. Let's play the simulation. As you can see, the cube moves a little bit and stops in short time because the damping translation value is amount of linear velocity that is lost over time. The higher this value, the quicker object's velocity is lost. Now, move this cube little bit, so that the other cube spin after collision. When we play the simulation, the cube spins around after the collision. Now, let's set the rotation value to all the way to 1. Play the simulation. As you can see, it doesn't rotate at all. Because the angular value is amount of angular velocity that is lost over time. Finally, Let's talk about the deactivation. It allows the object to be deactivated during the simulation. This will help especially if you have a lots of objects in your scene. To deactivate a object at the start of the simulation, we need to enable start deactivated option. So, the object won't move at start of the simulation until the other object touches it. If the linear and angular velocity of the object drops below the entered value, the object is deactivated. Blender stops simulating the object. Thanks for watching. 
See you in the next tutorial.